So look, I'd like to give a big thank you to everyone, subscribe, bot models, all that jazz. But look, let's get into this. And remember, check out Guard Blue after this. It is the author. He's a pretty dead on fella. I think he's pretty cool. And his videos are actually pretty good. Be me, DM of the skeleton party. Be not me, the skeleton party looking at the side of the ship. The big knoll comes over the side of the gunnels and is dragging a behemoth of a two-handed sledge behind him. Sledge doesn't do a lot of damage due to poor construction, and rolls at disadvantage when hitting. However on contact it throws its target 1d6 squares and depending on distance can do anywhere from 1d6 to 2d6 damage with a bonus against armor. Null Captain is shocked to see this is the group of warriors that has been keeping his raiding party at bay. A bunch of fucking skeletons in poofty clothes and a couple of girls. Rowdy Skeleton tries to take advantage and pull down the Null Captain's pants with his impact rod. Roll super low, so ends up giving the Null a hard jab in the ass. Null Captain is furious and spins around, fixing his one good eye on the Rowdy Skeleton. With this the other terrified Nulls Ray initiate combat to try and seize some advantage. Deck of the ship is littered with corpses of Nulls and Slippy from the Viscera sliding around the deck wood. Friendly Skeleton and Cryin hop back into it and begin slicing and dicing the Nulls around them. It's quite one-sided, as Cryin isn't even pausing to watch her kills sink to their knees, just brushing by them to the next kill. Friendly Skeleton continues to reap a toll as well with his scythe which keeps echoing in his skull, causing him to shake his head a bit with a rattle to clear out the annoying noise. Auspicious Skeleton is still cracking down and terrifying the poor Nulls, and has enough brain matter and meat stuck to his grave torch that the necromancer guiding them begins to use it as a conduit and funnel necromantic energy into it like a battery every time he snuffs out a Null. However by the gunnels, Rody tries to take a swing at the Null Captain, who catches the rod in its hands. Steel Rod gets bent slightly by the strength of the giant Null's grip, and starts pulling the skeleton towards it for a crush attack. However Rowdy has an ace and goes to whip a knife into the Null's one good eye. It would take a high as fuck roll to get it to high. Rolls a natural 20 plus modifiers. DM Stare.jpg. Rowdy whips the knife into the one good eye of the Null Captain, which lodges so deep that it just pulls out a mess of membrane and meat when the captain pulls it out from his eye socket. Null Captain is rightly pissed, and begins to swing his sledge in great circles. On the other side of the boat, Millie and Agile Skeleton are cleaning up shop, with Agile taking a lot of hits for Millie as they slaughter their way through these Nulls. Millie is tiring out quickly, but the undead energy of Agile fills in where needs must. After a few more kills, they both give each other a very bloody and tired thumbs up, but hear a noise and look over to where the Null Captain is spinning, and Agile begins running towards the fray. Everything within strike distance begins to try and duck or jump out of the way, with friendly skeleton and cry unable to duck and roll out of the sledge's way while a couple of Nulls are caught with a painful bark of fear and thrown across the ship towards Auspicious and his gore torch. Bueno.skeleton. Rowdy is also able to dodge out of the way, but catches the second swing of the sledge after losing his footing on some Nulls stomach. Sledge catches him right in the chain mail and throws him over the side of the ship, landing down below with a thud on the Nulls battle barge. Skull reeling. Rowdy stands up and is now face to face with 20 Nulls who were hoping to hide out on the barge while the boss bullied the others upwards. Probably told him they had to secure the lines or something. With shoddy cutlasses rattling in their hands, they watch the skeleton stand up, then scream at them with a guttural hiss. Rowdy rolls extremely high for the intimidate, and the nulls fail to harden their resolve, so I roll a flat d20 to see how many nulls flee. 20 nulls scream and leap off the barge into the ocean with a splash, doggy paddling as fast as they can towards shore. With a confused rattle, Rowdy stands there on the barge alone as the urine and panic shits of the nulls flow off the side of the barge into the water. Above him on the ship deck, things are getting weird. Friendly and the other skeletons have converged on the spinning Null Captain, who refuses to stop spinning and whipping his sledge around due to the inability to see. Even Millie is trying to help. The Nulls however keep getting caught by their own boss's sledge, either getting thrown across the deck, splattered against the mast and deck walls, or simple getting thrown overboard with a yip. Null Captain has also been taking a lot of wounds from the party, and this causes him to just spin faster and faster with wild abandon. 
all is going well enough until Millie fails a check and catches the sledge right in the chest. She is tossed across the ship, blood droplets spattering from her mouth as she lands, and her hammer goes clattering across the deck. Auspicious runs over to try and help at the necromancer's urging. As he does so, the necromancer begins to funnel power away from the other skeletons and into Auspicious to the point the bits of body and skulls on his torch begin to gibber. Aura is too terrifying that the rest of the gnolls on his side of the boat begin to flee towards the barge, dodging past their wildly swinging boss. As one knoll mounts the rails, it looks back at the scene behind it. The knoll running with it gets dragged down by Kryon, and bails in agony as she begins stabbing into its neck and back. The rest of the skeletons finally cut down the knoll captain, the giant behemoth finally sinking down to its knees while leaning against its hammer. Blood pours from his ruined eye, his mouth, and the numerous deep slashes across his chest. It gives a final angry gurgle, and falls face first into the deck. Surrounded by the bodies of his desperate crew, the Null then looks over to the girl who flew across the ship, and see the skeleton with the terror stick touch it lightly to the girl, and a purple mist begins to pour over the girl, and her wounds begin to knit back together with ear-wrenching noises. Then its head swivels over to see the agile skeleton shatter the legs of one of his comrades with a hammer, and as he tried to crawl away, the skeleton just did a weird finger gun motion at him before planting the hammer into its back. The Knoll then sees the Knoll start shuddering and desperately still clawing at the wood deck despite being anchored to it. Nope.png. The Knoll turns to dive over the deck, but instead of looking down into the remnants of its fellows, it instead is looking down into an extremely angry looking skeleton who has just whipped a boarding grapple at it. There's a pause of confusion, before the grapple smacks into his shoulder and teeters behind his back. Then with a sudden tug, it is launched forward through the air trilling in both confusion and panic, before landing with a dull wump onto the deck of the barge. Before its vision fades to black, the last thing it sees while rolling over is a skeleton face looking down over it, rope in hand, and the knoll can just make out other heads peering over the side of the rails before it passes out and the sound of rope on fur is heard in its ears. Party is idling about the ship as it has no wind. Party starts trying to clean up and take stock of what they have as well as interrogating their null captive. Rowdy Skeleton tries to communicate and make it into what is more or less an intent to fetch him stuff, fails to properly make his point and all the null hears is that he wants to make it into a slave. Null just blanches and goes mentally dead in a this is the end mentality. As everyone is laughing at Rowdy and Rowdy angrily rattling back. One of the other skeletons notices a noise and looks into the distance around the edge of the shore. Another ship is coming around the bend, their hopes of help are dashed as it fires a shot over their bow. Millie notices the flag of the ship and begins sprinting up and down the ship's decks and throwing gear and supplies onto the barge tied to the side of the ship, the side the other ship can't see thankfully. It's Artemuns we have to leave, now she screams, and cry and starts helping her and gathering all of her things. Skeletons are confused but begin helping, throwing packs of supplies onto the barge. Noll is tossed onto the barge as well being confused for a rucksack. As the girls scramble down a loading black with the cows, the skeletons ponder that what if the other ship is friendly. Won't it be better if they waited to see? Just as they think this, a cannonball slams into the side of the ship and exits out the other side of the ship, sailing over the barge. Ah. Skeletons all hop down at once onto the barrage and take up the barge poles, and beginning poking their way towards shore. The entire time the other ship is pounding the ship with fire and the crew are pounding their weapons together and chanting the name of their god, Avrace. As they are poling along, Millie says that Artemuns will take them as slaves if they get a hold of them, and both of the girls are sweating out of fear more than strength. Even the Noll is kicking its legs in the water to try and get speed, despite being tied up. They finally make landfall on a pebble beach and have a slight breath to rest. Before a cannonball kicks up a plume of rocks next to them, heads swivel as they see the merchant ship sinking quickly and the enemy warship can now see them on the shore. Everyone scrabbles to to get off the beach with their supplies and they all book it for the tree line as cannonballs rocket into the shore next to them. Cows are quite blasé about the entire thing and just trot beside their handlers, while the knoll is more or less dragged along by the rowdy skeleton. Party gets deep into the forest and notice a game trail, 
and after a conversation with the necromancer, begin making their way down the game trails. Noll is now tied to the side of a cow, by the way. After some time on the trail, the skeletons begin wondering what gender the Noll is after some jokes about he and genitalia are told to each other, the skeletons. Skeletons begin pantomiming at the Noll trying to get it to tell them its gender. Noll is fucking mystified and scared again as the skeletons are pointing at it and making gestures with their hands. Friendly skeleton asks the kids to ask it. Millie ignores them defiantly but cry and walks over. Whips down the Noll's filthy pants. Points at the tuft of fur down there. Victoriously says female. Noll passes out in shock, hanging on the side of the cow. Time passes and the girls, exhausted, climb on the cows to get a break from the skeleton pace. Quickly fall asleep, having been up for the entire day and night fighting. Skeletons let them sleep, but after a while let them all down to feed her. Give her food and water, but don't stop their pace to get to the necromancer. Noll easily keeps pace while eating and drinking, but after several more miles needs a bathroom break. As the Noll gets tied to a skeleton via a loop harness and sent off into the woods, the skeletons look off into the distance in the dim dusk light, having been traveling for some time, and seeing a smoke trail. A huge smoke trail. A lot of fucking something is on fire wherever the fuck it is. Skeletons look at each other curiously but are interrupted by the Noll trudging back after relieving herself and washing some of the filth off of her pants. Noll holds her hands up to be rebound, staring at Rowdy angrily. While staring at the smoke trail with the other skeletons, Rowdy just checks her loop harness and pats her hand softly. Noll eyeballs Rowdy but accepts whatever the hell is going on. Skeletons keep moving through the night as the children sleep, Noll keeping pace along with the cows. While on the trail Auspicious begins making fist motions at the Noll. Noll snorts angrily at Auspicious and ignores him. He continues and begins showing her how to play rock paper scissors. Noll's ears perk up and he begins to nervously play with him. After losing twice, yes we rolled all this, she angrily readies herself for the last toss. Flexes her muscular arm as she begins the throw count. Ties, both of them choose rock. She stares, pensive at his skeletal fist, then bumps it with her own. I have skin, so I when she growls, and goes back to ignoring him. Agile skeleton finds this hilarious and goes to ruffle the Noll's head. She slaps his hand away so hard the back of his skeletal hand slaps the back of his skull. Agile skeleton rattles indignantly. Necromancer makes contact and begins to give a report to them that they are in flight. Shares their vision with her thralls. The necromancer is running amongst a variety of races as they all flee a burning city. The necromancer looks back at the flags of Artemuns flying above the walls as the city burns roaringly. Vision switches back to thousands of people fleeing into the forest, and then cuts away. Skeletons feel a location pulse from the necromancer, and begin their undead pace anew on the game trail. Skeletons are hoarding us through the night as the children sleep on the backs of the cows, and the sun is beginning to rise. Party begins to slow down and look down. They have come onto the flight path of the populace, and the ground is littered with the dead of those who perished due to wounds or exhaustion. Even gnolls are seen amongst the dead, but the female gnoll in the party does not recognize their scent. The races are a wide variety, but all of them look heavily tattered in condition, many sporting open wounds, and other such injuries. The party moves slowly now, taking great care to step around the hundreds of scattered bodies littering the forest floor. On the backs of the cows, the children still sleep, crying and messily drooling. Even the Noll is taking care, sniffing lightly at some bodies as she steps along. After some time they eventually come to a clearing, where some more bodies lay. The clearing is lovely. Wild flowers are in bloom, the wind softly hushes across the tall grass, and even the undead calcium beings spare a moment to look on. There is only a single blemish on the scene and it is the spaces in the grass where bodies lay. Some lay face down, in the pose of their last movements. Others lay face up with their hands crossed across their chest, as if laid there by others. Many are old, a few middle-aged, and even some children lay dotted around the clearing. It's almost as if all races are represented in this great open grave. Again, the thrum of the necromancer calls them onward, 
and the skeleton stare unblinkingly for a few moments more before their rhythmic thump of hell to ground and breaks the silence, and re-enter the forest on the other side of the clearing. Time passes in a blur as the girls finally wake but stay atop the cows, tiredly drinking water and gnawing at preserved rations. Before long lights are spotted in the distance, and the last of the journey is traveled quickly before they come to the edge of the pine forest. People are sitting about, many still in shock. Some are passed out in sleep, laying amongst the grass like cattle. In the middle of this great throng is a mass of people milling about, distinguished by their great packs, maps, and hasty travel tables. And from in there comes the strongest thrum of the necromancer. The skeletons pass by those on the ground. No one pays them a mind despite their gore-covered appearance and smell. As the party draws near, eyes swivel to meet them and people begin to part as a figure makes its way through them. A wave of necromantic energy pulses over them as a small teenager comes into view. She looks exhausted, her clothes ruined and a large haversack over her shoulders. She appears to be an oni, her horn broken, eyes tired, and her young face bearing way too much age for her actual years. Well, you made it a little later than I expected, she says softly, and beams a smile at them despite the circumstances. The skeletons are beside themselves. Agile skeleton dabs. Rowdy does his best impression of a wacky inflatable arm man. Alpens just waves slightly. The cows moo. The noddle poker faces. And the two girls stare down in disbelief. After a moment or two, the necromancer explains that her goal was to raise the heroes of old, long dead legends and bring them back to help stem the tide of the Artemon's incursions and help her find her mother. When posed a question of why she raised them to help her find her mother, she simply asked, I figured, the heroes of the stories I grew up with were unbeatable when it comes to choice. Skeletal chess puffing dot jpg. She then asks the skeletons if they will help her. If they don't want to, she says she will simply lay them back to rest. All the skeletons agree, and she slaps her palms together. Alright then time to get you guys in proper form. She begins rubbing her hands together and from them bolts of necromantic energy play out of them, arcing across her face and her broken horn. She's smiling brightly, cheerfully, and the skeletons all feel themselves get immensely stronger as they complete the bond between their necromancer. With a sigh of glee she breaks her hands apart, and the skeletons all test out their new vigor while both the Noll and the girls stare on stupefied. Now, about your actions. She says, and puts her hands on her hips. The agile skeleton also puts his hands on his hips and sasses back when she confronts him about ripping off his own ribs for shanks. Oh look at me, I'm the necromancer, I raised dead heroes miles away instead of mooks from nearby, I'm gonna get mad at you for tearing off your own rib for a weapon. The necromancer guffaws and fires back. Look at me, I'm agile I do a stupid fucking arm movement whenever I backflip and do finger points at wounded enemies before killing them she yells back, and then begins to angrily dab in the same fashion as agile does during the campaign. You call that a dab this is a dab you cheeky shit. Aggressive skeletal and necromantic dabbing gif. Whole party stares on embarrassed until they both go back to mentally yelling at each other. That's right, the entire time thieve been yelling at each other telepathically, so all people see is a girl and a skeleton angrily jabbing at each other and then go into a weird dance off out of nowhere. Eventually the necromancer just turns off agile's legs and he clatters to the ground in an angrily heap. After that, the necromancer plays with the cows, meets the girls, side eyes the null angrily, she told the party they should have chucked her, and then fills the party in on the plan.